The former Soviet Republic of Belarus is often referred to as Europe's last dictatorship. Located between Russia and the Baltic states, the country has been ruled for more than 25 years by one man, Alexander Lukashenko. But opposition to him is growing. Snatched while they protest peacefully. It's indiscriminate. If you see military car, you need to run. Nothing more, just run. Riot police pushed back against the demonstrators, deploying water cannon and firing tear gas and rubber bullets. President Lukashenko had warned he would crack down on any unauthorized rallies. Things are heating up in Belarus. Freedom-seeking citizens of Europe's last dictatorship have taken to the streets and to the polling booths to protest the long rule of Alexander Lukashenko. And while the regime in Minsk is claiming a decisive victory in the recent elections, the uprising surging through the once quiet nation suggests the opposite. So how did we get here? The collapse of the Soviet Union ushered in a series of dramatic political changes throughout Central and Eastern Europe. Movements once seen as illegal and revolutionary drove the post-Soviet space westward as the no longer captive nations eagerly shed the specter of communism and Soviet control. That is, with one marked exception, Belarus. Belarus was a bystander in this era of democratic awakening. As Tatyana Zhozhenko describes, any hope for democracy, freedom, and prosperity soon drowned in a wave of Soviet nostalgia. Belarusians were caught in between, filled with memories of the past and faced with an uncertain future. Cue Alexander Lukashenko's rise to power, a former deputy political officer in the Soviet army and director of a collective farm. Lukashenko was the only Belarusian parliament deputy to vote against the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Once president in 1994, Lukashenko embarked on a campaign of continuity with the Soviet era. He opposed Western-backed economic programs, maintained state ownership of critical industries, and continued the use of Soviet-era iconography. Using the strong arm of the KGB, yes, that's the Soviet secret police, any opposition was forcibly quelled. Democracy activists disappeared, presumed jailed, or worse. And once more, Minsk became reliant on patronage from Moscow to maintain its struggling economy. While Belarus's neighbors were experiencing the prosperity and freedom of the West, the Lukashenko regime had mired the country and its citizens in the past. And now, those citizens are embarking on the post-Soviet transition that was lost in time. So what's next? Well, two things are clear. The uprising in Belarus is only growing. And so far, the regime shows no sign of giving up power. Will the West stand up for an oppressed nation seeking freedom, or will the specter of communism retain its hold? Stay tuned to VOC as we continue to explore the legacy of communism and pursue the freedom of those still held captive. <laughs>